What's up, Keep Pounding crew? We're back today with another video. Keep Pounding. This topic is day 17 of training camp. The final joint practice and the final practice of training camp 2021. If you like the video, if you like the channel, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell, select all, leave a comment down below. Let's dive on in. So today you saw... Uh, the defense went out again. You know, they showed the Panthers defense and the Baltimore off offense uh, out front in the front practice fields, which is not a surprise, you know, um, considering the fact that they wanted to showcase that more so than the offense. So I'm not surprised in that way. Um, I did not get a real good look at the offense, except for maybe a couple of series, and I, I managed to get one on video, so if you haven't checked that video out, go check that out. Um, but they limited the reps of P.J. Walker to one or two, and Will Greer had an entire, entire series uh, to himself. So that was interesting. Uh, I did see a couple of overthrows from Will. I saw one hospital ball for PJ Watts. PJ, uh, that left our wide receiver completely vulnerable, high up in the air, where he should not be, and it was an uncatchable ball. And he, <sighs> He did throw some good passes, though. I'll give him that. You know, when when he did have opportunities to do so, but it was mostly dump-offs and uh, corner routes, you know, um, which is not unusual considering P.J. and what he's comfortable with. Now, the trick is to get him out of his comfort zone because he's getting too comfortable. And I think that's the problem. You look at P.J. Walker... He's too comfortable. Yeah, the techniques, the footwork, the mechanics, everything looked good, you know. Um, on his good passes, just as much as his bad passes. They don't uh, intermingle except for that uh, part where he sets his feet. Now, you notice he, he'll hop two or three times versus Will Greer who will only just hop back twice, set his feet, and throw it. Now, the difference there is that PJ is too overconfident or, and overzealous with his throws. And again, that leads to hospital balls. So, maybe it's just a case of of overcompensating on those balls. Maybe it's not. Maybe he's just too comfortable. I don't know. You be the judge, folks. Because we're still trying to figure this one out. You know, it's been an entire month of training camp and I'm still kind of second-guessing what's going on with him. And I don't like that I'm in that position where I have to second-guess that. You know, as a uh, casual observer of this team, you know, and a critiquer. So, you know, and that's what YouTubers are called to do, you know, as, as Panthers YouTubers. So, you know, granted, keep that in mind. Uh, for me... I think if we give PJ some more reps and you know, really try to get him out of his comfort zone, maybe that might work. I At this point, I don't have any real solutions to that issue, but if you guys come up with any, let me know. Uh, I will be streaming later on tonight, so if you have any suggestions, drop them in chat and I'll uh, discuss it with you. 
moving on to the wide receivers. The, the wide receivers were a hot topic by Matt Rule uh, of conversation. So, from what I saw, the wide receivers did fine today. I mean, maybe Matt Rule seeing something that I'm not, but from what I was able to see on those series that I was given to, to be able to look at, you know, the wide receivers seem fine to me. You know, maybe they're running the wrong routes. That I can't determine because I don't know uh, Matt Rule's playbook or Joe Brady's pro playbook. So, you know, I can't determine whether these guys are running the wrong routes or not. You know, what I can do, however, is judge by how they catch the ball, their mechanics, their turns, uh, you know, the little things, right? And to me, those look fun. So, again, it's it's one day out of like 17, you know, that I've got to look at them. Um, but I wish I would have had a little bit more time to look at them. Because that's always been a hot issue this week. Uh... Moving on to the, the offensive line. I didn't see any penalties on the offensive line. However, again, I only saw a limited number of series. So, you know, it's hard to judge whether there were any flags. Um, apparently somebody made a big play over there on that side of the field. Which, uh, of course, caught the attention of people on this side of the field and yeah I don't know what happened over there but maybe they'll uh, put a video up or something and we'll be able to look at it so you know keeping that in mind thus far just judging by what I saw they looked fine now tight ends look good you know, no reason to, to really dig too much into that one. You know, the, the tight ends have always been there for check downs. And, you know, we've leaned on them a lot in training camp. And I don't know, yeah, is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, you tell me, you know, depending on how many... Uh, reps these tight ends get, you know, and how much they're they're targeted. You tell me if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because I'm still trying to determine, you know, whether that plays a major factor into our offense. I believe it does. Um. Now, as far as the defense, now I got a real good look at the defense today. Defense won out, as I said, uh, mainly the pass rush. If you look at the pass rush, we had a, uh, a couple of pass deflections by uh, players that were able to get through the line and break up some passes. We also saw a couple of interceptions. One of them was Shaq. Um, he made a pretty good play earlier on before that interception to break up a pass. Uh, we also saw Luvu do really well out there. Um, Big 94 caught an interception. And there was also a uh, pass breakup that led to an interception. So there were three today, I believe, total. It was either two or three today. I'm going to count it as three right now until I see otherwise. But um, overall... You know, that pass rush looked amazing today. 
I don't want to overhype them, but they looked amazing. We'll see how much that translates into the uh, game on Saturday, but yeah, for right now, I like what I see. And I'm going to stick with that conviction, and I'm going to double down on it. Now, uh, moving on to the defensive tackles, since we just talked about the linebackers. The defensive tackles uh, allowed a few big runs today. Uh, and the corners allowed a couple of runs to the outside. You know, and we didn't cut off the outside lane. The same goes for Baltimore's defensive tackles. So it kind of evened out, to be honest. Uh, particularly on the kickoff returns. You know, we look good uh, at stopping the draw play today, which was a major area of concern for me. But we didn't seal off the outside. So, to me, that's not a win. You know, we're still struggling there, in my opinion. Uh, so, let's... I wouldn't say we're in trouble, but I would say we're struggling there. It's a challenge, right? That we gotta get through. And we can get that fixed in the private practices, I believe. Um... You know, there's a lot to discuss there because when we look through the footage we'll be able to see exactly who missed their tackles who who didn't fill the gaps you know and stuff like that um, granted the li limited visibility of those videos I did not have full visibility in a good spot to look at it but um Overall, I think, generally speaking, the defensive tackles should be okay. You know, we were only giving up about three to four yards of carry during that Colts game. So, you know, it's not a major area of concern at the moment, but it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, you know, moving on to... Uh, free safeties and strong safeties. I feel like, you know, Jeremy Chin had some brick. Good day today. And I felt like it was a, less of a challenge to break up passes than it normally is because of the pass rush uh, being as strong as it was. You know, that being said, that's, that's the positive part of the domino effect. You know, um, you got the negative effects and you got the positive effects. The positive effects is what you saw today, where uh, when the pass rush gets the job done on the line, the line uh, motivates the, the linebackers and the corners to make plays. And sometimes it's the corner that can be the spark. Sometimes it can be the safety that can be the spark. But you know, if if you're more focused on uh, guarding against the pass rush, these wide receivers are going to have a little bit of trouble focusing on uh, making sure that they find their spot to get these balls. And, you know, granted, Lamar Jackson is who he is. If you let him out of the pocket, he's going to burn you. And he took advantage of the outside lane, you know, that, again, I discussed where we didn't cut off that outside lane. Uh, and the running back feasted on a play or two over there. So, you know... to focus on a little bit tighter coverage. I feel like if, if this is press coverage that we're running with these corners, then we need to get a little bit tighter coverage because 
there's a couple of these guys that got targeted for a reason by Lamar. You know, he's he's going to spot everything. He's that good, folks. You know, even during training camp, he's that good. He'll spot this stuff. And he'll spot that, that extra little separation, and he'll target you if you're a corner. And if you don't close that speed and close that gap, that wide receiver's going to burn you. And you saw it a few times today. So, uh, if you look at the footage, which we will do during the live stream, I'll be looking at uh, yesterday's film and today's film in the live stream tonight. Plus the pressers, plus any other news that pops up. So, that in mind, overall, I thought we had a good day. Yeah, um, I didn't see anybody really suffer any exhaustion or lack of energy on the defense. I, you know, maybe they did on the offense, but I didn't see it on the defense. So, if that is the case, you know, and Matt Rule talks about it in the presser, then, you know, I can't speak on that. So, because I didn't see much of it. That in mind, that humidity was horrible today. It was horrible. That's one of the worst ones I've ever been at. In um, humidity wise, so you know I get it if the humidity uh, wears on you a little bit uh, towards the middle part of the day, but early practice wise, you, you got no excuse. You know, and I like the fact that he Matt Rule jabbed at him for that. You know, that's a good thing because these guys need to understand that you cannot just come out there you know and have a lazy day of practice after uh, all that social media you know it's a total distraction and I was saying on my live stream how Dabo Swinney had a, a good idea of uh, making sure to turn off uh, social media during regular season and practices you know because it's a it's a real distraction for the players I don't know if you can necessarily do that in the NFL but I know that you can do that in college um and there's a good chunk of players that actually do turn off their social media accounts during uh regular season so you don't hear a word from them and I think that's awesome you know uh if you can do without it then by all means, but um, that's going to be a topic that nobody really uh, fully embraces, but I will, you know, I'll talk about it, because I find it interesting that that was pointed out. Um, Last week, If I'm to give my final thoughts on the entire training camp as a whole, I think, you know, our main areas of concern are, as always, uh, and not necessarily in this order, offensive line, uh, linebackers, wide receivers. Those are the three areas that really have me genuinely concerned. Otherwise, yeah, I would say defense tackles would be next. Um, but as of right now, my main concern is those main red line areas. The good news is we've got a lot of depth on our roster. You know, Scott Fritter and Matt Rule saw to that. 
So, you know, there's encouraging news there that we can, in fact, do something this year depth-wise to fix some of these problems. But we got to be healthy. we got to be able to execute properly. we got to do all the little things and techniques that need to happen to make that possible. off practices and fix some of these problems it will show up on Sunday against the Steelers you know we won't be able to see that stuff but we'll see what uh, what work has been done this week against the Ravens on Saturday so however well that translates we'll find out If I was to give my opinion on how training camp has gone this year, I would say as a total grade, probably a B overall, B overall, because, you know, there's some areas you'd like to see improved, you know, that's not unusual for training camp, but um, the fact that we have had so many opportunities to try to fix some of these problems and kind of struggled in those three main areas kind of leads me to think you know okay well what can we do now you know that we weren't doing before so yeah I that as far as an A to F grade you got to push that as a B I would be I could be convinced to say B plus yeah, because we were stronger in some areas on defense, so. But overall, you know, that's my thoughts on training camp as a whole this year. You know, after 17 total practices, counting Fan Fest as one of them, you know, it's a loose, it's a loose practice when it was there. You know what I mean? But, uh. Sorry, I was looking at that car that was on fire. They had a fire truck out there. Driving on the highway back home. But, um... Pray for those folks, please. Uh... Yeah, overall... Good training camp this year. I have really no real complaints. That could be considered... Valid at this point that we haven't really fully addressed. I didn't spot anything new today or yesterday, so that's a good thing too. Um, you know, as long as I don't spot anything new in the joint practices, that's always a good sign. You know, we're moving forward, and as long as we're moving forward, positive things will happen. Quick shout out to the staff at Wofford. Thank you very, very much for hosting this team again. You know, you guys do an excellent job. The merch teams did an excellent job. As always, um, everybody kept us safe. And, yeah, I'm happy, you know, with the staff at Wofford. You guys do such a fantastic job. We'd love to have you guys up in New York up in uh, York County when we do move to training camp. So if anybody from that staff is watching and they happen to uh, end up in York, I will be happy to see you guys up there and uh, greet you guys. Or ladies. You know, everybody did a fantastic job. So shout out to everyone. Wofford College has always felt like home to this team, and ever since I've been going there, I felt like I felt comfortable. You know, I've never had any complaints. The parking was fantastic, everything. You know, um, so that being said. I 
look forward to training camp next year, and I look forward to this preseason. Let's see what happens. And if all goes well, we should have a lot of success. said I will see you guys in the live stream tonight don't forget to uh, check out the Facebook page keep pounding in all caps for live streams posts in-game posts polls anything of the like and also if you're interested in a fantasy football keep pounding league for Yahoo let me know in the comments below or on the Facebook page you can PM me as well and uh, DM me on Instagram as well, six, Shadow Warrior six four five. That is my gamer tag. Hopefully, I'll be able to get into some gaming streams soon, and uh, be able to do some stuff for Shadow Warrior Gaming too. So, if you're interested in that, come check that out. I do Madden Mondays. That'll be starting up soon. So, don't forget to check that out. Uh, mostly, I've been doing mobile streaming on there, so yeah, it is what it is because of the busy schedule with YouTube, but, you know, training camp takes up a lot of my schedule, but if you're interested in that, go check that out, that'll be on Facebook, I am streaming on there for now, um, I guess that's it, uh, thank you guys, and that should wrap up training camp for the year. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, you got to come out to some of these practices. If you couldn't and you live somewhere else, you know, that's that's unfortunate. But hopefully my videos uh, were good enough footage to where you got a good inside look at what we're doing. And hopefully my reviews give you a pretty good idea of how we're doing. With that being said... I will see you guys for the next live stream tonight. As always, keep pounding. See you guys in the next uh, live stream. Peace.